The elephant in the classroom is augmented reality. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Daria Yagorina. She is the founder and CEO of Cleverbooks. Welcome, Daria. Thank you for having me here, Tanya. So tell us about Cleverbooks. What do you do? Clever Books provides uh, STEM-oriented global curriculum-based uh, teaching and learning solutions for primary education, and all our solutions are powered by augmented reality. Now, as a part of your augmented reality solutions, you have an app, don't you? That's right. We do have an app, and it's not only one app. However, I would like to recommend everybody who is listening right now to go to the App Store on your mobile device and download Clever Books geometry app and we're going to show you a little bit about how that app works at the very end of the interview so what are the current challenges the education sector is facing as far as education uh, and using technology so in the era of rapid technological advancement we know that schools are right now struggling to maintain the relevancy in their classroom and the changes what are happening with the technology outside the classroom so they are pretty much obliged to use their um, technology however they don't know which ones to implement how to implement and how to go with that all and also i think that one of the points here is that uh, stem is heavily pushed to be used and to be implemented as a part of the curriculum. And I think that technology is the good answer to that. But like I like to say is that technology is the answer, but where is the question? And the question is pretty much that you need to uh, select the relevant technology for, um, for the relevant uh, parts of the curriculum that you, want, you are planning to teach in order to develop the 21st century, century skills that kids really need for their future jobs. How do kids actually benefit from using technology in education? It depends what kind of technology. I can talk on my side about the augmented reality um, in first place. The augmented reality is the part of really great uh, technology and advancement that is uh, helping them to develop those necessary skills like critical thinking, like teamwork, like analyzing things. And I think the, the most important part of it is that visualization part um, as the augmented reality helps to represent everything in 3d and like in real world that's one of the great things also kids can learn not only through that technology because it touches uh, kinetic audio visual um, and any any type of uh, personality that is um, that are out there in the classroom and covers that all but kids while using the te advanced technology like augmented or virtual reality they can help to get that sense of what is out there in terms of the emerging tech and who they want to be in the future. And also uh, augmented reality definitely um, saves money uh, because nobody from the teachers can bring the, kid, uh, the elephant to the classroom. And thanks to augmented reality, it is possible. You can bring the pyramids of Giza or Eiffel Tower or the Statue of Liberty or any animal and they will be like real right there at your, at your fingertips in the classroom. You mentioned that it saves money, but there is actually a cost, right? I mean, what additional burdens do parents and taxpayers shoulder in order to bring this kind of technology into the classroom? It all depends on type of technology, on type of provider. I can't speak about everybody because some of them, if we're talking about going a little bit into detail, because augmented reality could be, um, could be with the specific device like virtual reality, like glasses, then you would need to, be, to buy the glasses and it's an extra cost. There, are something, uh, there, are, there is augmented reality that is based on the specific pixel recognition or picture recognition. And that means that you have a specific uh, picture and then when, they, when you call when the developer codes something in Unity, they put the objects on that picture and then launching the app helps to recognize specific pixels and then help, uh, helps the, uh, um, the user to experience that augmented reality. It could be QR code based and it could be also markerless, but markerless is a little bit high-end devices at this point of time. And that's why majority will go for something that is called picture or pixel recognition. And then it, it needs the physical product to be bought. And it all depends on how much content is put out there, how much um, efforts the provider of the augmented reality actually puts in order to develop the, the program itself. Because developing augmented reality is not a massive issue. It's not a rocket science at this point of time with all the tools that are out there. 
and AR kits and so on and so forth. What is difficult is the content that needs to be inside this app because the content can only display the objects or have some interaction and it could be relevant to the curriculum or not relevant to the curriculum. So it's not enough to be the developer and know how to do the things, but it, it's important also to have the understanding on what information is required by educators in the classroom. So when I'm talking about the costs, if we think about how many, how much will cost the trip to the zoo for the whole class and how much will cost to get the uh, the app or the product based on the augmented reality app in order to see the, all the animals of the planet anytime you want or do any science experiments or go travel anywhere in the world to visit the country and learn about it, I would say augmented reality is the cost saver. Give an example of the adoption rate that you're seeing with augmented reality in the classroom. So the best example would be, I can talk about my solutions and example. So if we take about our uh, map with the augmented reality, it's literally a poster with the uh, map of the world and different continents. However, thanks to the app, which is updated, we update it regularly every like three, four times a year based on the feedback we get from the users. You can experience first, you can see the globe itself and cut it uh, and see what is inside uh, the earth. You can see different time zones, you can see different continents, you see political map, you see different animals interact with them. You can see plants, you can see heritage around the world and get the information on that. So every sub menu has its different uh, things. And also you can discover, uh, you can see how the world of the, the, the age of discovery was. Because you press on the country and you can see the ship going, out, going around the globe and you see what Spanish um, have opened as a continent, what England opened and so on. So it's a lot of information in there and it's not the end of it because we can put it constantly. And then if we talk about cost, you get the map and the rest you get free of charge. How does augmented reality benefit less academically successful children? Uh, we, have a, uh, we have run several pilots with uh, less academically successful children. And uh, there is a, a reason behind that why they are less uh, successful academically. And the main reason could be because if, for example, you are a visual type of personality and you're pushed to study through the books, how much information you will perceive, there will be no pictures. Or if, for example, you're a kid and the teacher is trying to explain you what is a tetrahedron and you're looking at him and saying, okay, and if it's a picture in, the, in, your, uh, in your book, it's, it, it's not giving you like enough, enough information and visual part to do that. So we have tested that in this type of environment and we have also selected the, test, the pilot test in among dyslexia kids, um, ADHD, down syndrome kids and autistic kids and it works absolutely perfectly for all the type of kids it works because it keeps the 100 percent um the uh, visual retention rate and then kids are excited about something new and technological in the classroom because otherwise it's a bit of cognitive dissonance if you are having a tablet or mobile device outside the classroom at home and then you come to the classroom and you have a piece of chalk and you write something on the board or a marker or something and it's like okay and where i'm going if i have more advanced something or a smart home in my home and something like analog age in my classroom, like a dinosaur type of environment. So, <laughs> so that's, <laughs> the, uh, the results have shown that the increase um, in average in all the groups was about 33% in terms of the academic achievements and information perception uh, for all those groups of kids. What advice do you offer educators who want to integrate immersive technologies into their school and for parents who want to use it at home? So first of all, think of the, if there is a testing, uh, testing part, go and try before you buy, because I think it's important. You, you need to understand what kind of information is given there. Uh, search for providers who take care of the content, who really focus on a specific industry, like uh, if they work in the education, they do everything only for education. This means that they have some group of consultants behind, somebody who approves uh, the content and so on and so forth. Think of the point that uh, if, if there are any certifications uh, behind, if this company has won some specific 
um, education industry awards. So if this company has these all, go try their solutions and see if this is something that is in terms of user interface, really uh, something that is, that is easy to use and really intuitive because sometimes it might be complicated. And then if you feel comfortable with that, just go, uh, go for it and try it out. And also search probably the social media if there are any, any feedback apart from what company is posting, maybe somebody else is posting about this company and saying how they like or hate their solutions. <laughs> Daria Yagarina, if somebody wants to connect with you, CEO and founder, I should say of Clever Books, if somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they've downloaded that app and they wanted to see how that works. Uh, how can they do that? So, first of all, to connect with me, you can find me on the LinkedIn. There is nobody with that, uh, with that specific type of name and being the CEO of the Clever Books as a combination. So, you can find me on the LinkedIn or you can get in touch with me or anybody from my team just going to our website, www.cleverbooks.eu, like Europe. And now, we're going to show you something. And when I will, when I will be showing you some, this something, you just need to launch the app that you have just downloaded before our conversation. Press the button in the menu shapes and face the camera of your device on this picture. Well, there you go. Yeah. Thank so you so they much, Daria. Right. So they can, you can pause, obviously, and then try it again and explore all the options. We'll do that. And thanks for the work that you're doing in education. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here in ZDNet or Tech Republic or go to my website, tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.